Okay. Here is my Anycubic Photon 3D printer. Uh, it's the small one similar to the Elgu Mars um, printers. It has a small base. I'm trying to stay out of the light. So at least the room light will show you. Um, it's a really good printer. I've had it for a while now. I will probably probably tell you uh, at the end like how long I've had it because I ordered it from Amazon a while ago. They're actually on sale right now. Um, I think I paid around $200 for this. So they're like under that. So if you're looking into getting into 3D printing, this is definitely the time to do it. Um, it's a really nice printer. I know I've already said that. The only thing that I really have a big issue with is just the fact that the USB uh, stick plugs into the side. Other than that, that's really the only problem I've had. The other things I do want to point out, and I will uh, point them out once this print is over, so, but the, if you notice that you're having a lot of failed prints, I highly recommend that you re-level the build plate, okay, and I'll show you, uh, like I said again, once this is done, which will be here in about an hour, but through the magic of video editing, it'll seem only like a few seconds, but I'll show you what to do, and I'll tell you the, some of the mistakes I made while using this printer. So I'm going to go ahead and end the recording right now and I'll pick back up once this is done. Okay, and as you can see here, my print finished. I'll take it out here in a moment. But some of the settings I want to show you is actually in the menu and I really didn't want to try to do it while I was printing. Yeah, that looks kind of messed up because of the lighting. <laughs> All right, so you would go into Mo Tools. Okay, and when you hit this, the build plate would actually go all the way down and basically come in contact with the bottom. Okay, which this wouldn't be here if you were leveling it. So once it hits the bottom, it bounces back up and then just lightly settles and there's still a gap. So what you would do, okay, is that you would select either the point zero or 0 0.1 or 1 millimeter. I did the 1 millimeter before it hit it, and it, and it says until you feel resistance with the paper that you would place on the top of this for it to settle on. And you would pull on it, and if you feel resistance, that's fine. Well, what I learned is 1 millimeter is not the best setting. Leave it on 0 0.1, tap this about six to seven times. Uh, seven usually works for me. It gives it a resistance, but not heavy resistance, because if you, if, if you would do the one millimeter, it would be heavy resistance. And what it ended up doing was that this, as when it went down, it would kind of, like you would see it curve back up. So it was going down too far, and luckily I did not crack the LCD screen. Okay. Um, which was a really good thing, because I really don't want to pay to replace it. Um, but with this here, it keeps this from doing the curve up. And, hang on one second, let me grab some paper towel-like things. I don't know how well this will show up, but that is nice and straight. Okay. And I'll have a link to this 3D file because it's the uh, Doom guy from Doom Eternal. But this is just the base form to stand on. Now I had to scale it down because, you know, this printer is not that big. Uh, but as you can see, you know, it's not bent, it's not stair-stepped, it just has the 
uh, striation lines from it layering, building it up. But in essence, it actually turned out a lot better. So I highly recommend if anybody gets this printer, um, definitely do the the point zero. The, I mean the 0 0.1 like I said hit the down about six times when you go to level it and then that way it will level give you the resistance and it won't give you that flex because like I said I've had some bad ones I don't know if I still have I think I do I'll definitely have to wash my hands but here's the Doom Eternal when I was still doing things wrong and as you can see it like warped all get out but as you can see that one's definitely a lot better so now I just have to clean it up uh, I gotta drop it in my ultrasonic cleaner after I remove all the supports off of it and then uh, hit it with the UV light to cure it and then after that it's pretty much just clean up of any nubs or anything that are left from removing it and that's that Okay, so basically this is how I calibrate it. Uh, this sheet comes with it. I usually set it there. I know it says like A4 or something like that in the instruction manuals, but hey, you know, as long as it's a sheet of paper, it works. So I'm gonna go into tools, move, and then hit the home button. Oh crap. One thing I forgot to do, and I have to find the tool, is you have to loosen this up first, or otherwise you'll crack the screen. Yeah, it's a little tricky doing it one-handed holding a camcorder. All right, so now if that's loose, you can see that moves. Turn it back on. Tools, move, home. Okay, just hit the bottom, came back up. Now it's going to rest down. Now, see that's really easy to move. I don't feel that much resistance at all. So now we come down here. I left it at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And it would help if I tighten this up. <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing. Make sure you have that tight. I do that a lot. Okay, so let me gotta raise that back up. Considering that wasn't tight, I don't think it centered right because it was still a little sloppy after that. And I usually feel a little more resistance than what I was getting. I always like to go at least 10 or 100 millimeters up, so I'm going to re-hit the home. Now, if that's tight. Set that back to 1, or point, 0 0.1. Okay, so again... Hardly any. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Feel a little bit of resistance, but not like I used to. That's eight. Okay, that's where usually seven would be. All right. 
So now we go back, hit the zero, Z equals zero, and then enter. Okay, so now it's zeroed out. So now we go back up. Take that out. Okay. And then I'll re-stick the vat back in. For this, I oh crap. Okay, one thing I forgot to do was I forgot to tighten that down. So let's try this again. So I'm gonna now that everything's zeroed. Hopefully, no prints will fail. If it does, I didn't re-zero it because I pretty much set it to the same thing. And you just want to snug these down. You don't want them so tight that it takes a little bit of force to get them open, which is what I did here. You just want to snug them down so that they can gently be twisted open. Okay. And now it's time to print something else. So let's see. I want to. I'm printing some uh, legs for the Doom guy figure from Doom Eternal, uh, just because I scaled that down. Which is, to, I have it in my ultrasonic cleaner over here, cleaning up. Which I need to get a new one. <laughs> I'll play it for you here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy started. You'll see it lower down. And if there was a way I could record the whole video of it building it and watching it go up, I would, but who knows? Okay. So there's that. All right. So now over here, this piece of junk, I mean I've had it for a while and I've abused the crap out of it, but here's why I need to get a new one. Usually there's a fan whirl and figures it's not going to do it now. Um, but yeah, I mean I've used this thing a lot and I need to get a little bit heavier duty one. I mean it came from Harbor Freight, it was like 80 bucks so it's fairly cheap. Uh, but, yep, that will take uh, almost six hours from what the screen's saying, which isn't bad. And it is seven o'clock, almost seven o'clock right now, so yeah, it's about one in the morning that should be done, hopefully. So we'll see what happens. Okay, and since that, with the magic of editing, this has been a couple of days, and as you can tell, here is the Doom guy from Doom Eternal. I mean, the detail is very good on this model. He, his head and arms are not glued together, so if they fall off, um, it's, you know, and he's not actually glued to the base either. Yeah, you because know, I still have to paint him, and I don't want to like have him permanently, everything permanently attached. Um, I still have to do some patchwork on some spots. Like, come on, camera. There we go. But I don't know if you can tell, because if I zoom in anymore, it's gonna like blur out. But there's some spots where there were some supports, and I have to patch up. But other than that, it actually came out really good. Um, I figured out a trick on how to not have to re-level uh, it all the time. 
and that's called put the one end of the build plate down on the surface like how my hand is use your use one hand cup the top of it not where the center piece attaches to the to the unit and just kind of hold it there then you can use your spatula and try to like split it off of it and that way you're not moving that piece because uh, as a matter of fact let me go over here and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that but there's another piece and I still have one more piece to print uh, but other than that this thing's really really good um, especially considering right now I think you can get them for like 169 bucks uh, you may if you order it through any cubic site it might take a few days to get it because I think it's talking about like September or something like that which I know that's this month but I think it's not till like later but yeah I mean it's like 169 bucks and I mean if you really want oh, see there just went one of his arms because like I said I didn't I don't have him like all the way glued but I mean the detail quality is really good on this And everything and yeah I mean I highly recommend it um, I think it's just as good as the Elgu Mars uh, so yeah I definitely give it a thumbs up if you're definitely wanting to get into 3d printing um, right now that's the best way to go I know their uh, photon X which is the more expensive it's got a little higher resolution uh, screen little bit higher build uh, well it's definitely higher than this one this one's 155 millimeters tall that it can go up the photon X goes 245 millimeters I read, saw somewhere it was 250 but they must have changed the specs because it's now now 245 I mean five millimeters eh, that's not gonna that's not gonna make a whole bunch of difference but yeah, I mean, if you definitely want to get into 3D printing, that's definitely an entry point, 169 bucks. Uh, you can check Amazon, see if it has that price. If not, you can go to anycubic.com, and I know you can order it there. Or if you want to pre-order the Photon X, uh, go right ahead, and hopefully at some point I will get that. But as I always like to say, have a good day.